Well, before we begin, let's uh, begin with those word of prayer. Brian, would you have a mind to this, please? Lord, we're thankful for another day of life that you woke us this morning and brought us all to this place. Glad that we can be here with one another, open your word and study from it. Pray that you help us to listen to what your word says, give us Blake in it as he presents his material that we can take it, make application, be better Christians, better servants as we're thankful for the blessings of life, most importantly, Jesus. This lesson is on reading scripture well, and uh, it's reading scripture publicly. Uh, because of the amount of material I had to work with, I'm adding the second part so that we have a full class of reading scripture uh, in, in private at home or, or in a study somewhere. Uh, World War II. You think that all, all the men, they're, they're, they've gone off, or mostly men, I guess there's a few women, gone off to a war. Uh, so many of them are in combat situation. And the loved ones back home, you know, they don't know, you know, their, their husband, uh, their father, son, brother, they don't know really what's exactly happening with them. And so they're watching that mail. And uh, when they get a letter, that was... That was a big deal. That one, they got a letter. Uh, so much things must be going okay, so far so good. But think about how it was when uh, the letter was read, you know, in the living room or wherever, wherever the rest of the family gathered. Uh, these are the words from their dad or the husband, or whatever, and you know they're hanging on every word. Uh, What's going on the other side of the world? You know, you're in harm's way, which they may have hid in the way they wrote the letter. But it, it was a big deal. Uh, and it probably played out just tens of thousands of times in homes uh, on a regular basis as they heard from their loved one. And, you know, they, it was probably read repeatedly. They're probably trying to read between the lines to make sure they're not missing anything. Uh, make sure that they're getting everything that was being said. Uh, they, were, you know, they hungered for what was in that letter. Keep this in mind as we go through this lesson, uh, because so much of it that so much of that relates towards what we're going to be looking at. I mean, we're reading God's letter to us, His word to us. First uh, Corinthians. 14 verse 37 says, If anyone thinks himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things which I write to you are the commandments of the Lord. Paul was always running into challenges wherever he was. And sometimes it was from his own brethren or churches uh, challenging, you know, he has too much authority, somebody else wants to uh, take that on. And Paul here says, Hey, the things I write to you, this is what God's saying this is his commands this is his words to you first thessalonians <clears throat> 527 paul wrote that church i charge you by the lord that this epistle be read to all the holy brethren and if you look at the english standard version it says i put you under oath before the lord to have this letter read to all <coughs> the brothers so it was, it was a big deal uh this was something to be read, and, and again, they didn't have the Bible, you know, take home with them and study whatever. So when they were in the, uh, together together, this was the only time uh, they would hear the scripture unless those blessed uh, with with knowledge or whatever could you know be teaching it later. So they they probably hung, and they knew Paul personally, uh, and they probably hung on every word that Paul was saying. It was from Paul. It was also from God. Uh, they're struggling with the world, uh, trying to, to uh, uh, be the kind of Christian that uh, Paul has commanded them to be. And so they're, uh, Paul probably had typically had their attention. If you look all through the Bible, reading publicly has always been something that's uh, been a central part of, of being a, a, a God's people, being a Christian today. Uh, it wasn't something that merely 
occupy a space in your service, not occupy time. Uh, it, it's supposed to be something that helps with our spiritual direction as we go through a, a service or a class or, or, or whatever the setting might be. In Ephesians uh, 3, 4, Paul says, when you read this, you can perceive my insight into the mystery of Christ. Uh, so he's saying we can understand what he's saying. We might have to dig it out or study, but it's, it's not like we're given something that's over our heads. We, we, can, we can dig it out. Uh, in Isaiah 34, 16, uh, the writer said, Isaiah says, uh, search from the book of the Lord and read. Uh, so God's speaking to us and we need to listen. And we can't listen if we don't hear it, if we don't read it or listen to someone else reading it. And I think most are familiar with uh, Nehemiah 8, uh, where uh, he's reading the scripture to the, to the people there. And they have this wooden platform he's up on. He has a priest with him to, to help uh, with the reading and understanding. And everyone's standing. Now, granted, back then, everything, transportation was mostly by foot. So... They were used to being on their feet a lot, but still, uh, I can't imagine standing all through service, but I, I wouldn't last. Uh, but, I mean, this was something, they hadn't heard this in a while, and it, was just, it just shows you their attitude towards the word they were about, about, to, uh, about to hear. Verse 8 of Nehemiah 8, it says, So they read distinctly from the book in the law of God, and they gave the sense and help them to understand the reading. So it was, it was more just reading it. They made sure that people understood what was being said. Not a lot of point in reading something if you're not going to get the meaning out of it. Uh, <clears throat> I remember doing a, uh, oh, it's been so long ago, I counted up the hours that we would spend uh, in two services on Sunday, uh, two Bible classes a week you know, and a couple five day uh, meetings during the year and added that time up and it amounted to less than a, uh, uh, it amounted to a grade school education if that's all the studying or reading we do I mean you're not even out of grade school and, and you remember Oliver Murray I think it was Oliver Murray he talked about a Christian been a Christian 20 years or more he says there ought to be walking Bibles and you spend 20 years studying something. And uh, so it's, it, it's, it's something important, and it's something we got to work out. Uh, Nehemiah 8, that gives us our example, too. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, you can see it wasn't something just quickly read. It was something held in high reverence. Uh, it was very important to them. Uh, so what are some of the things we can do that uh, will uh, help us? Uh, one of the things the book listed was guard against familiarity, breeding contempt. In other words, it, it's uh, it's too easy. Uh, you come to a verse you read before, you just zip right through it. Uh, you don't spend the time there. You, you should. Is uh, if you're a young person or you're not used to being in front of people, uh, there's a tendency to hurry up, get it over with, so you can sit back down. And uh, it's not something you want to speed through. Uh, we're we're uh, Again, repeating God's word. How would he read it to us? It's his, it's his letter to us. Uh, you think about it. He, he's been at war with Satan and his army. He sent his son here to die on the cross. All, the, all through the Old Testament, he sent his prophets and uh, uh, prophesied and they were persecuted. And he's done everything he can to provide a pathway to him and uh, eternal life and, that, and how to live through here, through this world. And so we need to pay attention to what he has to say and, and, and take it seriously when we read it. Uh, I always enjoy the, the singings that we have where there's songs, there's reading scripture, and, and there's prayer. And it's all coordinated. And even though the verse, I mean, just be a few verses, but still it, it just seems to have more meaning when you fit it all together. Uh, and that's the way it should be. Uh, have you ever, uh, I haven't seen one in a good while, but I can remember when I was younger, uh, one of the Bible stories on TV, 
and they never, you know, they never get it right. They always got to change something, ad lib, or whatever. But after you, you watch that, it always seems so real. But it was real. But you're seeing, I guess you should say, the uh, how the uh, the drama played out. I don't, I don't remember. Some of y'all may be old enough to remember uh, way back early Stonegate days, Titus Edwards. He used to talk about the drama in the Old Testament. And when he'd go through an Old Testament uh, lesson, uh, uh, he he had the dynamics to put that where you could see that drama. That wasn't, he didn't get carried away, but he made it alive. He made it real. And he was so good at that. And that's there, but we've got to, when we read, we've got to read careful enough to, to pick those kind of things up. Uh, and there's so much to learn even in, you know, from the Old Testament. Uh, and it says, uh, one of the things it says, do not attempt exaggerated dr dramatics. You know, we've all seen someone sometimes they're really getting after it. Oh, we've got a question or comment? Uh, okay. Uh, we, we've seen a, 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 something where it's, it's some preachers that can't keep still and it's back and forth. I, I remember watching one one time, back and forth so much, I got to watching the back and forth instead of listening to them. Uh, that was a long time ago. Uh, it was a visiting preacher. Uh, but I mean, you can get it to the point where you get to watching the person and not the actual words. And uh, uh, again, they have maybe good intentions, but it's something we, we watch. And there's some judgment here. You got a question there? Well, I was going to make a comment about the thing that you're talking about right now. It's like that. Um, I don't know if they do it anymore, especially now with COVID, but we used to go to the library and the librarians would read or the, or the teachers would read with such enthusiasm that it, it drew you into the story. And I think that um, linking that with your first point of familiarity, um, the familiarity when it's, there's a principle of scarcity. And when there's a scarce resource, we tend to, as humans, take it more seriously. And, and when it's there, we, we put it more in a priority or higher esteem. We appreciate it a little bit more, it seems to be in, in many situations. And so, uh, as we are familiar with the passage, it's like you said, we can't just breeze through it, but hopefully us reviewing and being familiar with the Word of God allows us to put more emphasis and, uh, and kind of do like that old librarian and, and kind of bring people into God's Word. You know, you made me think of a time uh, when I was young, not that it wasn't reading, but getting familiar with something. Uh, Water World, wherever it was up in Dallas, uh, they had a slide. It was five stories, six stories tall, you know. You get halfway up there, and oh, what did I do this far? And you look down, you look like you're just going to die. And that first time, you know, your heart's up here in your throat. Oh, that wasn't too bad. And you get by the fourth or fifth time, it's just nothing to it. You're trying to figure out how to make it more exciting or whatever, but you start getting used to it. You're not paying attention to all of the stuff that really got your attention the first time. And I find myself, you come to a scripture you already know by heart when you're reading and you just kind of zip through past that till you get something you don't know. What did you just miss that, that you might have picked up if you'd slowed down? Even though you, you know, it's an infinite a God that gave us an infinite word. We got finite minds. We can never get it all. And there's, there's just always something there to, to uh, pick out that you haven't got before. What? Yeah. You, you brought up the drama, and I've mentioned this in class before. Uh, forgive me if you know the story already, but uh, the drama of the scriptures that you brought up, you've got to be careful not to read too much into it. However, we're reading about people who are real. And one of the illustrations that, that the guy you mentioned uh, used one time and really, really stuck with me was we read about Isaac and he saw that caravan bringing his wife, his new wife to him a long way off. And the Bible says that, uh, uh, you know, she got off the, I'm, I'm assuming a camel, I think it says a camel even, and they went into the tent and she was his wife. And that's what basically what the Bible says about it. 
but think about him watching that camel, the illustration that was used, watching that caravan. Every young man alive would be, his brain would be screaming, wonder what she's like, wonder what life is going to bring, uh, is he bringing a wife? All those things that a young man would be thinking about when that woman is coming toward him. And we miss that if we rush through it and don't take the time to think about what's actually going on. You know, think, think of how many times you watched a movie and your heart's pounding because of the excitement. And, you know, Isaac, his heart was pounding, waiting to see what she's going to look like and if she's beautiful as she was. I remember right. And yes. We don't get that, like you say, we're running through it. Good point. Uh, something else is prepare. You know, we're going to get up and read scripture. You don't want you want it to go flow smooth. You don't want to fumble. Uh, it can easily be names that are hard to pronounce that we need to pronounce ahead of time if we can even ever. Sometimes that's tough to do. Uh, but I always, uh, you know, we, we start making announcements. There's usually a verse or two that we read, and, and I always look at it two or three times. Yeah, it was easy to read, but when you're standing in front of people that can change kind of the dynamics. Things don't always tend to flow because you're thinking all these, how you're sounding, you know, everybody's looking at me, you know, how am I looking? You're, you're trying to concentrate a whole picture and when you really need to be concentrating on, on those words. And uh, so it, it helps to read, read through it ahead of time if you're going to read publicly. Uh, and, as the uh, book says here, you know, also, you know, when you're reading, is this something joyous, som somber? Uh, it's a simple narrative, poetic, or argumentative, or warning. Uh, we want to put some inflection, if that's the correct word, into our reading so people can sort of feel what you're reading and get more out of it. It's Again, it's, this is God talking to us. Blake, I, I, would, I would venture to say that it's a little bit more than a suggestion to review, especially in a public for, format putting as much emphasis on this being God's word and we have to speak as oracles of God. That means like speak where the scripture speaks, be silent where it's silent. And yeah, we, we stumble and we make little mistakes here and you know, here and there verbally, but for the most part, we have to put emphasis on it. Just like if we were gonna do it in, in any other aspect of our life and do public speaking, we would probably review the speech or review over the material before we got up to speak publicly. So with God's word, it needs to be the highest of emphasis and, and then service, like we talked about last week, last week, service to God's people. You know, if you remember, well, for me it's a long time ago, grade school, the teacher reading a story and she, she, you know, gets enthusiastic and puts, the, as you say, the drama in, I mean, that can make the story seem so interesting or whatever. Uh, I mean, you're, you're just following everything you're saying. Uh, <clears throat> something else is, is uh, uh, it says understand that everything communicates. You know, and I think about the last lesson I taught in here, I talked about greeting visitors well, the first impression. Uh, this, the book brought out some things, you know, just the way you may be approached, walk up to the podium uh, the way you're dressed, maybe the way you're holding your Bible or your, your iPhone or pad, uh, your, your eye contact, you know, with, with the audience out there, uh, how well you're understood, you know, your volume, your clarity. You know, some people just got a voice, like you, Roger, your voice is, is deep, it's clear, it carries, you're easy to understand, but may be hard to hear. And, Someone who has a soft voice, they really need to take advantage of a PA system. And again, if you're talking fast, that just makes it a little bit harder to understand. Uh, so, so all that kind of plays in, into, uh, uh, into the, the big picture when, uh, when we're reading. Uh, the need, people need to understand that you can, you can set the mood by the way you present yourselves when you're up there and the way you sound. Again, speed isn't uh, isn't important. Now, sometimes we start running out of, we're doing a lesson or something, we start running out of time, we, we pick up, you can't help it, you gotta pick up, you're just not gonna cover the material. Uh, but uh, when you have time, uh, you know, slow down, smell roses. Uh, we're not in a hurry, we're not in a race trying to get through it. 
Um, and also, when you're reading scripture, 1 Timothy 4.13 says, Till I come, give attention to reading, to exhortation, to doctrine. First time I heard the truth, I was with Molly, I was dating her. Uh, but man, I was getting beat alive with the scripture. I mean, the preacher, he was just, it was like too bad to get over it. It just, I, man, it was just, I wouldn't have come back if it wasn't for Molly. I mean, it wasn't like he was presenting something here. This was a long time ago, 50 years ago. Presenting something to consider. I mean, I was just getting beat over the head. And I don't know if you remember, uh, again, some of the older guys remember Oliver Murray, the way he preached. He had those charts. And those charts would have the scripture written on it, sometimes a little phrase or something. And he had that pointer. And he, I remember he, you'd hear him pop that chart and, say, and he'd quote the scripture. And he's, he'd make a, a statement and then he, another scripture. And he just, he let the scripture do the talking. And that was always thought, man, if you're ever going to invite someone to a meeting, he was the guy you wanted preaching because now he wasn't beating you over the head. He was just letting the scripture do the talking. And that's hard to resist when, uh, you know, you make a statement, well, here's what a so apostle said, and then you make another statement. Instead of spending 15 minutes of your opinion or everything, you're spending most of that time reading scripture. It just really can impact uh, uh, the, the listener that's listening to it. But again, when we quote that scripture or we read that scripture, we it's God's word, and we need to put the put whatever whatever uh, again. I'll use the word inflection. In it to, to, so that it has the impact that it, it should have. Uh, what about when, <clears throat> uh, when you're reading it, reading at home? Second Timothy, uh, or any, any uh, maybe a Bible study uh, other than a, a service. Second Timothy two fifteen says, "Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker who does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth." How many times have you heard someone justify some position and they quote a verse and they just pull it out of context? Uh, I think the last time I heard someone was in the house, uh, uh, they said, judge not lest you be judged. And I said, well, keep reading. Uh, hmm. they, they, that's what they know. You know, you keep reading, you see, well, we got, you make a, a judge with a righteous judgment. Uh, you see your kids playing with somebody that's going to be a bad influence? You know, well, you got to make a judgment there. Or are you going to just let them play? Uh, evil companions, what queer morals? Well, that, that takes a judgment to make. Uh, and so you, you, we, we've got to take, uh, when we read things, we, we've got to, what's it saying before, what's it saying after, uh, who's doing the talking, who are they talking to? Uh, all that helps us to, to understand what's being said. It all makes a difference. Uh, you know, this is kind of an exaggeration, uh, but it's, again, you can make the Bible say absolutely anything you want to if you pull things out of context. Matthew 27, 5 says Jesus, uh, Judas went out and hanged himself and then jumped to uh, Luke 10, 37. Jesus says, go and do likewise. Well, yeah, that's ridiculous, you know. <laughs> but if, if you've studied with people, uh, like some of these come in the door knocking, whatever, they'll hit a verse here and then they jump over here another verse and they're just scattering all over and to justify whatever position. And, and again, you can make anything make sense if you are justified, if you jump around like that. Paul told the Ephesians in six verse, uh, chapter six, verse 17, he says, take the, the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Uh, I'll never forget, I was standing in the driveway, uh, my father-in-law, this was 30 years ago. I was young, a young Christian. Uh, I didn't know the scripture very well, or at least by heart. And we were just sat, uh, out there just talking, and two guys in white shirts, black tie, on bicycles, pedaled up. And they got off and started talking. And... They didn't get very far, my father-in-law started book, chapter, verse on it. I mean, just it just flowed smoothly and everything. And within just a couple of minutes, so we got to go by. And they turned around and went the other way. 
And it, it, just, it, it just impressed on me how if you know the right scripture at the right time, you can't stand against it. Uh, that was so effective. And then again, that was 35, maybe 40 years ago. Uh, and I still, I still remember it. I still can picture it. Hebrews 4.12 says, The word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and the joints of marrow, and is a share of the thoughts and intentions of the heart. So the, the uh, word, it, it's alive. It's, it's a sharp sword, and it, it can discern anything. Uh, uh, just think of the, uh, the people Paul converted that were so worldly. You know, we can, I can think back in my life, and I probably just know a few people in my lifetime that were so very worldly, and it completely turned them around, they, and they stayed faithful and became strong servants of faithful Christians in the church. Uh, and it's just impressive when you see that done with someone. And, uh, but that's what the Word is capable of doing. If it's read correctly, if it's applied correctly, uh, it, it's, it has power. Uh, it talks about how the Word is, is, uh, is a two-edged sword. Uh, and would you get in a sword fight if you didn't know how to use the sword? I mean, you get all cut up, or worse. And, but yet, uh, did this thing just go out? Oh, well. I'll try to get some other batteries. Okay. Uh, I'll try to speak a little louder. Uh, yet, if we're studying with someone or someone asks us questions, uh, there's nothing worse than not having it. When you got that scripture right at your fingertips from memory, uh, that's so effective in, in teaching someone. Uh, or at least where... The older I get, the more I see so much remembering Scripture as where a particular Scripture is located. Because when you can turn to it uh, and let them read it, maybe, uh, that's, just, that's effective in a study. Uh, the Scripture it exposes our sins, it convicts us, it draws us closer to Christ. Uh, again, we have to read it, we have to uh, or present it to others for that, for that to happen. Uh, now, Satan's our adversary, and he knows Scripture, and, and he knows our weaknesses, and he's a whole lot stronger than we are. Uh, he's an adversary, really, we, we should fear. And uh, in Matthew uh, chapter 4, this is where Jesus is fasted and he's tempted uh, by the devil. Matthew 4, verses 1, the first three verses. Uh, it says, Then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights after he was hungry, now when the tempter came to him, he said, If you are the Son of God, command that these stones become bread. So uh, Jesus is in a situation where you know, he's weak from hunger, uh, Never comes out very quickly with him. Oh, no, okay. So he, it's working. He's weak from hunger, and uh, he's at a point where Satan decides, you know, this is a point I can I can tempt him, and and. Uh, and he tells him, you know, he's really trying to take advantage of Jesus to get him to use his miraculous powers for a selfish purpose. Uh, and, of course, Jesus, when Jesus was confronted, uh, just any time with questions or when the uh, Jewish Jews were trying to trip him up, uh, he so often it is written and go to Scripture. And uh, that's what he does with the devil here, with Satan. And it's Deuteronomy 8, 3 that he quotes. He says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds us from the mouth of God. So uh, Satan, he stopped for the time being, and uh, at least with that, with that temptation. And uh, uh, the next few verses, he takes him, he tempts him again. Before I read that, uh, Ephesians 6, 11 Paul says, put on the whole armor of God that you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. So here comes one of the wiles from, from Satan uh, to Jesus. 
Again, Satan knows scripture, so he's going to quote scripture. He says, Then the devil took him up to the holy city and set him on the pinnacle of the temple and said to him, If you're the son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, You shall give his angels charge over you, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And that comes from Psalms 91, verses 11 to 12. So he quotes some scripture, again, that, he, that for the, Satan, for his purposes, he takes things out of context uh, so often. And, uh, but Jesus just turns right back around, uh, and Jesus replies, again, he replies with scripture, and he quotes, uh, it's in Deuteronomy 6, 16, but this is being, what he quotes, this is from in really Matthew 4, 7, when I read this. It says, uh, you shall not tempt the Lord your God, you know, Satan's the father, he's the father of all liars. He's going to, if he's saying something, if, if they say if his mouth's moving, you know the truth's not coming out. Uh, that's Satan. And he's going to use it for his own purposes. And without the God's armor, we can't stand against that. Uh, we need the truth in our lives that we can stand against that. Psalms 119, verses one, uh, uh, verse 160, The entirety of your word is truth. And every one of your righteous judgments endures forever. So it's something that we can stand on. It's not going anywhere. Uh, no matter what Satan throws at us, uh, we're, we're good. Uh, it, it, truth doesn't change. It's going to endure uh, eternally. And, and so it's always going to uh, work in, on our behalf. Yeah. Uh -huh. in, in, in Psalms 119, where you were, in verse uh, 9, Psalms 119 verse 9, it says, How can a young man keep his way pure? It says, By keeping it according to your word. So as we talk about how we as per perhaps adults handle the word of God in, in, in our public uh, environment and also leading our families at home, it's very important that our young, young people, when the young men in this class, understand that they want to have a way that is pleasing to the Lord. It's just not about reading, sitting at the feet of mom and dad, reading, but understanding that it, it will be the way that they will keep their lives pure before God. And that is applying the word of God to situations that they come in their lives. You made a point a moment ago uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, talking about the communication aspect of how we interact with various ones. The Word of God teaches us the kind of people that we need to take into our bosom, if you will, to be associated with to a more intimate degree, perhaps, than others. So again, <coughs> what you're talking about with the Word of God, how it should be utilized in young men, young person's lives. Well, you know, too, when uh, I see a, a young person up there I just appreciate their getting up there. I mean, that already speaks something before they even start reading whatever they're reading or doing. And too, when a young person's up there, you expect something to be fun or something, but you see right past that because they're getting up there. I mean, you got to start somewhere, and you're not gonna, no one starts off perfect, so I just that's just the way it is. Okay. So uh, let's see. The devil can't stand against the, the truth when we will when we're wielding that uh, sword of the truth, uh, and that means considering all the truth. Have you ever been uh, studying with someone, and again you're 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 trying to lay the scripture out in front of them for them to consider rather than beat them up with it, and uh, after a while, I mean they're starting to put some things together now and then. A little light comes on, and one of two things are going to happen. All of a sudden, they realize they're going to have to make some changes if they do what they're seeing, if they're what they're hearing. And they, they back up. Not going to have any more studies, because they don't like the way it's going. And, and I mean, they see what, where it's going. They can't, you can't miss the truth if, you, if you're presenting it well. Uh, and so they just shut, shut the study down, or they start getting nervous. They all of a sudden realize, maybe I'm not right. Maybe I am lost. And uh, 
it starts, the truth actually, there's a good heart there and it starts convicting the soul. Uh, again, it's a lot of it will have to do with how we read that scripture to them, how we present it to them. Uh, you know, <coughs> if it's presented, you know, too harshly or, or whatever, it, it, you, you know, you can shoot yourself in the foot before you ever get to study uh, going. Uh, you think about it, uh, God loves us, and this is his word to us. And people can pick up if you care. They can pick up if you're concerned about them. I used to go out with a guy. Uh, we'd go door knocking, never knew where we were going to go. But he'd always have something somewhere. I tried to self study. But that was one, one of the things he'd always make up front and periodically through a study was his concern for them, for their soul. Uh, they weren't going to miss that. Uh, and I mean, he would use the word concern, he would use the word love, uh, but that would be multiple times, not overdoing it, but multiple times through, the, through the, the study. So even though maybe they heard a scripture that tended to uh, start to convict them or they were going to have to make a decision or something, the attitude that the, 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 the speaker had there it wasn't like, I remember D. Bowen used to say, you know, sometimes people hear the truth and the, the, the clinkers come down. You just shut, you shut down what you're listening to. You're not going to listen to it anymore. Uh, but if they see a loving, caring attitude, that keeps those clinkers up or the doors open longer to get more truth in front of them. And finally, there's a point that uh, they, they got to make a decision. Uh, and I think I already mentioned it, a point of when we're reading scripture, again, if it's something you, you know real well, we tend to, to just rush right through it. Uh, I enjoy listening to Jeff's sermons because he, he digs a lot of times, he just digs at things out that you haven't seen before. And, and it, can, it can easily be a verse that you just, you know by heart, uh, but all of a sudden you got, he connected it with something somewhere else, or he brought out some little point that, I've read that, I've seen that, but I've, I've missed that point all this time. You think you know a verse until somebody shows you something that's there that you didn't see before. And all, that's, to me, that's always the coolest thing when that little light comes on. Uh, to, to pick up something there that wasn't there before. You know, I can remember back when I first started, I didn't know where anything was. Uh, I knew what I had to do to be saved, but when I was talking to someone else, I didn't know where, where the verses were. And uh, it's so aggravating because when you're first converted, that's when you have the best opportunity to get that scripture in front of others. Because everybody's, well, why are you going to church every Sunday now? Why are you not doing this that you used to do with us? And that kind of thing. And I didn't, I didn't, I knew I'd heard the verses, but I didn't know where they were. I didn't know how to present it. And uh, that was frustrating way back when. So we're going to finish up a little before time. Um, so we have an infinite God, it's an infinite word. We can't read the scripture enough to get the most out of it. And again, when we read scripture with it publicly and privately, this is God speaking and he's listening to us how we speak his word. You know, if we remember, if you don't get anything out of this, remember that because it, it should impact the way we deal with scripture publicly or privately. Any, uh, any comments or questions? I had to do the prime, the, 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 the study of, other than publicly. We, we were really finished early, but there was like two pages of, on this in the book. I said, I ain't going to work. So, okay, well, I appreciate everyone's attention, especially the comments since it's a little bit shorter lesson. Thank you.